Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Mata McMahon. I'm sorry I couldn't be here present in person for the 16th International Conference on Children's Spirituality, but I do want to share my work with you. So I'm going to read the paper that I wrote for this conference entitled Spirituality and Play, Making Connections for Early Childhood Education. I will be showing you the paper as I read it and hopefully we'll be able to connect virtually to answer some of your questions in the Q&A session. Thank you. My paper is entitled Spirituality and Play, Making Connections for Early Childhood Education. I am Jennifer Mata McMahon. Maria Montessori stated play is the work of the child, which has been repeated often in the early childhood education field in order to validate the amount of time we allocate for children's play in the classroom. It has been made evident through empirical research findings dating as far as the 1960s that is through engagement in play that children learn and develop best. Pretend play, for example, has been found to reflect cognitive, representational, and affective expression abilities in children to different degrees across different cultural backgrounds. There are even studies looking at organic function of pretend play and drawing parallelisms with play fight in animals in which researchers suggest that pretend play might have similar functions such as assisting in social behavior, improving sensitivity to social signals, and emotion regulation for humans. Yet there continues to be a need to justify play and its benefits for children's development and learning. Diligent work, focused attention, listening attentively and quietly still are the most valued ways to learn. And even when equating play with work to help skeptics understand its importance, play still needs to be explained and advocated as the main way in which children best learn. Having both work preparing pre-service and in-service educators to work with children and work directly with children myself, I have witnessed how it is through play and mainly play that children can make sense of the world around them, can come to grow and develop into their best selves, and in the process teach us adults to enjoy the adventure that learning is meant to be. When children play, they explore, they pose questions, they find answers, and they figure ways to better interact with others. Furthermore, all areas of development are facilitated and nurtured through play. Regarding cognitive development, inquiry skills facilitated through play help expand the mind as children build conceptual understandings. Cognitive processes such as imagination and affective processes expressed through this creation of stories have been found to have incidence in creativity as well as in facilitating problem-solving skills. Oral language development, literacy skills, and vocabulary grow exponentially, as well as social and emotional self-regulation through social interactions and negotiations that come to the forefront during dramatic play. Pretend play has been found to facilitate perspective taking and emotional understanding coping abilities, and adjustment. Physical development is also facilitated through play when children climb, skip, run, paint, draw, and scribble, using their entire bodies, both gross motor and fine motor skills, to help make their imagination come to life. Furthermore, in viewing the child through a holistic lens, it would not be a stretch to suggest that as the mind and body are being prompted to develop and grow through play, so is the soul. I would venture to assert that spirituality is also an aspect that is nurtured and allowed to grow and expand through play, as are all other areas of development. And I would not be alone in this statement. I conducted a survey study with two fellow researchers, Michael Haslip and Deborah Schein, searching to understand how in-service early childhood educators nurture spirituality for the children under their care. 
In looking to describe the perceptions educators have of nurturing children's spirituality, we designed a survey to be responded to by in-service educators working with children between ages 0 and 8 in secular, non-religious, non-faith-based early childhood centers or schools across the U.S. The survey was contact validated by experts in the field and is in the process of being piloted to determine its reliability and be able to be widely distributed among others interested in using it for research or training purposes. The preliminary findings shared here come from the responses of 33 in-service early childhood educators, mainly female, 31 of them, white, 24 of them, with 10 or more years of experience, 25 of them, working as preschool educators, 22 of them, in private settings, 22 of them, representing 16 states in the U.S., and majorly located in urban areas, 17 of them. In the survey's open-ended questions, we asked early childhood educators to share how spirituality informed their practice and how was spirituality nurtured through their curriculum and planning. In their classroom environment and schedule and within their overall school. We found that respondents explained that it was through offering opportunities for creative expression and free play, engagement with nature, contemplative practices, for example, mindfulness, relationship building, and moral character development, that they were able to nourish children's spirituality. In looking at the data, the answers provided to the survey questions, I found that the word play came up in the early childhood educators' responses 42 times. Respondents perceived play as a way in which spirituality not only could be nurtured, but play was mentioned as intentionally being used to nourish children's spirituality. One respondent explained, being a play-based room we have centers in the room that let children drive their own exploration and interest through dramatic play, expressive arts, blocks, sensory, etc. The children have ample opportunity to be fully immersed in their stories and world of imagination. And I believe that it is through these kinds of experiences that children foster their own skills related to emotional social development which is connected and or rooted in spirituality. Other respondents shared that open-ended play in the woods, outside play, self-directed or child-directed free play, and providing an overall play-based curriculum were what they found best helped them in nurturing children spiritually. In previous work with in-service teachers, I interviewed six practicing teachers in order to determine their understanding of spirituality, their openness to nurture spirituality in their classrooms, and their knowledge and preparation to do so. I found that these teachers understood spirituality to be an important aspect of development and would be open and eager to facilitate it in the classroom, yet they did not consider themselves prepared to do so. From this study, I urge teacher preparation programs to intentionally include in their mission and curricula courses with overt content to prepare teacher candidates to serve the spiritual needs of the child. While working in a teacher preparation program, I surveyed teacher candidates to inquire if they believed spirituality could be nurtured in the early childhood classroom and found that the majority of them not only thought spirituality could be facilitated in the classroom, but asserted that it should be done. These pre-service teachers deemed spirituality important and thought that ways to nurture it for children in classrooms would be through one, appreciation of nature, two, reflection and pondering, three, meditation practices, four, yoga, and five, overall practices that centered around the child and the children's needs. 
in a more recent study I conducted looking at spirituality, specifically at spiritual experiences and expressions as they relate to kindergartners, I define spirituality as an innate human characteristic, a potential we are all born with, which allows us to connect with something beyond us, transcendence or the divine, feel part of the greater universe and be connected to otherness. Spirituality encompasses the individual capacity and the essence of life, providing humans with a window to greater consciousness and more profound understanding of being, meaning, and purpose. Under this view of spirituality, and from the responses gathered from both in-service and pre-service early childhood educators, I propose that through play, educators can nurture this potential for connection to otherness for the children under their care. Taking a developmentally appropriate approach to teaching children through play, early childhood educators can provide the appropriate experiences in their settings in order to not only facilitate learning and development for the cognitive, language, social, emotional, and physical domains, but also for spiritual growth by taking into account and valuing the child's spirit, thus providing an even more appropriate care by honoring the child holistically by including the spiritual domain. Nurturing children's spirituality can be facilitated as the respondents shared in our survey through allowing for free play, open-ended play in the classroom, as the main component of the curriculum. Other researchers and scholars have also advocated the inclusion of the spiritual domain in the classroom as it pertains to young children. Miller argues that students are not wholly present in class because the spirit has not been welcome in the school thus creating a disintegrated presence in which the classroom chair has been occupied, but the spirit lives elsewhere. While Schoonmaker explains that for her, the classroom is a spiritual space, and that teachers need to recognize that children's spirituality is part of their being, and honoring it in the classroom requires providing opportunities for its expression within the ordinary events of classroom life. Furthermore, Buchanan and Hyde argue that the roles of thinking, the cognitive aspect, feeling, the affective aspect, and inner reflective intuiting, the spiritual aspects, are necessary and complementary in the educational process if learning is to, be, be, to go beyond the surface and be experienced as transformative. In making a point of highlighting play as the natural way in order to nurture the child spiritually in the classroom, Harris explains that spiritual moments are direct, personal, and often have the effect, if only for a moment, of awakening a person to questions about identity and place in the universe. And that such moments have the potential to capture the essence of spirituality for the young child facilitated through playful moments. The ability to make believe through pretend play allows children to be awakened with an awareness of community and purpose for the world around them, which Harris proposes is a dynamic component of spirituality. As mentioned above, a more developmentally appropriate way to care for young children is to include the spiritual domain in the ways we view and facilitate child development. Yet, von Gartner and Buchanan propose that developmentally appropriate classrooms are already characterized by the very conditions described as necessary to set the stage for a spirituality of caring, including creating or maintaining a warm classroom community, putting experience at the center of learning, fostering caring interactions between children and adults, and valuing transcendence. Nevertheless, early childhood educators can be more intentional regarding nurturing children's spirituality, and one major way in which this can be achieved is in setting up the classroom and its play centers to allow for appreciation and expression, wanderment, pondering, and exploration through open-ended 
child-selected and child-directed play. Allowing for play can facilitate feeling wonder, awe, joy, and inner peace, which Shine describes as responses to spiritual moments. And I pose that the classroom as a play-based learning environment can be the ideal space for children to experience these moments. Since, as Montessori explained, play is the work of children, it seems as a natural extension that play would be the best way to facilitate learning for children in schools. And in doing so, educators would be facilitating what has also been found as a natural path to nurture spiritual growth. By allowing children to play, we can contribute, contribute to their overall development and also make strides in nurturing their spirit. Thank you. Below are the references that I cited in my paper and they will be shared with you through the conference website. Hopefully we'll be able to connect to answer some of your questions. Thank you very much. I hope you found it interesting and I'll be glad to answer some of the questions that you might have.